Christ Community Church and C3 Media presents the Deeper Dive Podcast. Pastor Dina and Pastor Mitch are about to take you on a deeper dive into the Bible. So here is your host, Pastor Dina Harder. Well, hey there, and welcome back to our Deeper Dive Podcast. So glad you're here, and you're coming back to join us today as we continue our FAQ series. And of course, you have Pastor Dina here with... Hey, Pastor Mitch, and I am so excited about this series. This has really got some good content, great questions, and if you really are able to follow us as we've gone through the different podcasts, I think it'll really help you as you're going down through your journey in life. And I just want to remind you as you're listening to this, that if you have questions of your own or questions that others around you have, um, please send them to us, comment on this or email us. You can go to our website, www.cccsc.org, and you can email me, myself, or Pastor Mitch, and just let us know what your questions are, because we would love to dive into those questions too. So today, this is part two of our frequently asked question about why do bad things happen? And as I said the last time, this is such an all-encompassing question that there's so many tangents can come. Um, as we look at this and just realizing, you know, we can only answer so much of this because you could just dive so deep. So uh, we're going to try to bring you some answers to some specific things around this, beginning with the last question you asked me. So I'm going to give it back to you. And that is, are natural disasters from God? I would have to say, just a direct answer, no. There you go. I would say absolutely not, because we established God and his character, his being, his essence, is absolutely 100% pure goodness. Yes. So there can be no evil, no bad things come ever from him, ever, ever, ever come from him. There you go. But then there has to be, okay, what is the cause of bad things happening? You talk about mudslides, you talk about cyclones, talk about Mm -hmm. hurricanes, tornadoes. And we know, again, in the Old Testament, there's a lot of ambiguity about Satan and Lucifer. But you come over to the New Testament, and all of a sudden it just jumps right at you. Like in the early chapters, or the, almost the beginning of the ministry of Jesus. I mean, his first mm-hmm. 40 days of ministry, he's one-on-one in, in the desert with who? The devil. Yeah. And so he cu- talks about this, and you probably will look at the verses, but yeah, we let's... are told that there's been a change mm-hmm. from planet earth when adam and eve in the garden sinned against god they not only sinned against god but they took the stewardship that god gave them to have dominion over the earth and handed that authority that legal right over to satan and said here you're now ruler of the earth yeah and we see that clearly so since you um referred to that that's where we'll go so our first deeper dive luke 4 let's go to luke 4 And this is verses 1 through, well, 1 through 13 is that whole section. And this is when Satan tempts Jesus. So this is right after Jesus got baptized, and it said that he was led out to the desert where he was fasting for 40 days and 40 nights. And said at the end of that time, he was tempted by Satan. And so we go to the first temptation. It said he ate nothing during those days, and at the end of them, he was hungry. Yeah, I would think so after 40 days of not eating. Said the devil, or Satan, appeared to him and said, If you are the Son of God, tell this stone to become bread. And so Jesus answered, It is written, Man does not live on bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Then we look at uh, verse 5. The devil led him up to a high place, showed him in an instant all the kingdoms of the world. And he said to them, I will give you all their authority and splendor, for it has been given to me, and I can give it to anyone I want to. So if you worship me, it will be all yours. And I'll finish just this part. Verse 8 said, Jesus answered, it is written, worship the Lord your God and serve him only. But verse 6 and seven are crucial in this, and I'll let you expound because that gives kind of the answer to what we're talking about. Who is the ruler of this world? 
this is a fascinating ex- exchange of commentary. Yeah. When Jesus, who is God, comes as a man mm-hmm. full of the Holy Spirit, led into the wilderness, he meets Satan. And this is this is one of the most descriptive yeah. uh, verses, chapters, context, narrative story of Jesus meeting the devil. And it gives you a one-to-one encounter. And uh, I think this is why the New Testament is so much more revealing about the nature of God. And it also, when you get into mm-hmm. the nature of God, it reveals who your true enemy is. And God is not your enemy. God is for you, not against you. God has given you, it says, through the, through the sacrifice of his son, there Jesus, he's freely given us all things. Good. So therefore, when you understand the nature of your warfare, that it's not God, your heavenly father, that's testing you, tempting you, trying you is that you have an alien presence, an alien force Mm -hmm. that is there to get you to doubt God's goodness, doubt God's word. You see this being in display with Jesus. And he says, all this authority, all these kingdoms of this world have what? Mm -hmm. Been given to me. Yeah. That's why I believe that Satan is in charge of the weather. I believe that's why stuff yeah. happens to destroy mankind, destroy your property, destroy your possessions, because mm-hmm. Satan's Satan's goal is to not really come against you, although you're made in the image of God, mm-hmm. but it's to thwart God's word, to make God's word not advance mm-hmm. uh, and come to pass in your generation. Yeah. And so it's very clear in this because how could Satan tempt Jesus? was saying, I'll give you all this authority if Satan wasn't given that authority. And he says that what that was given to him. So he he admits that the authority was given to him from whom? Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden, when they sinned against God, turned their authority, their rightful authority from being under God to now being under Satan. Yeah. Yeah, because we were supposed to subdue the earth. That's what, and if you didn't listen to the last podcast, the episode right before this, I would encourage you to go back to that one first. Just stop here, go back, listen to that one, and then proceed with this one because we went through that foundation of God is good. And whenever he created us, male and female, he said, you are to rule the earth and subdue it. But then Sin entered in through Satan, and we essentially gave that over to Satan and said, now you have authority. And you'll see that if you go ahead and just flip a few uh, books further into John 14, you'll see how Jesus references Satan, John 14, verse 30. He said, I will not speak with you much longer, for the prince of this world is coming. He has no hold on me. So he calls Satan the prince of this world. But very key to read, he has no dominion over Jesus. And so once Jesus died, rose again, and we have salvation through him, and the, his resurrection life lives in us, Satan does have does not have authority over us. That's so good. That's really good. There's, uh, I think in that you're implying, which I think is good, Jesus was totally sinless, so yes. therefore Satan had no authority. I am sinful, therefore, <laughs> if you want to put it this way, I am a slave to master Satan mm-hmm. until I give my life to Jesus. Yeah, And that's where you have in the earth today, you have this battle going on, people who are slaves to Satan and people who are slaves to Jesus. That's your, that's your two choices. Mm-hmm. I know Pastor Dina made fun of me in my peanut brain example, but I, even I can hold on to that. You have two choices. You're either serving God <laughs> or you're serving your own flesh or the, the nature of, of Satan, which is selfishness. Mm-hmm. That's your two choices. And we're here to encourage you that when you make a choice to serve Jesus, life just becomes a bed of roses. You never have any problems. You never have any temptations. You don't go through any struggles. It's just just sailing down the creek of life. And how many know that that is not true? <laughs> In fact, you just stepped into spiritual warfare Yes. mega size when you go off into serving Jesus and you're in a hostile environment, hostile mm-hmm. a place, there's everything in it, every factor I could say emotionally, relationally, physically, intellectually, spiritually is set against you now. You have become combatant number, enemy number one to the forces of hell. There you go. Yeah, it's it's <laughs> a 
And that's and you got to gear up because it's warfare, and you just got to be prepared to fight. You've got to be prepared to stand mm-hmm. your ground. You got to be prepared to let God train you, equip you, let Him teach you out of the Word, let Him teach you His authority, let you teach you how to lean into the Holy Spirit, lean on the promises of God, take the Word of God, and make it your sword. I could just just mm-hmm. go on with the battle metaphors, but it says in Matthew eleven twelve, it says the kingdom of heaven suffers violence. Yes. And the violent take it by force. The word violent means to be utterly ruthless with your own nature. Mm -hmm. Like there's everything in me, just want to give up and quit and say, I can't do it. But that's not the nature of who Jesus is. The overcomer lives inside of you. The greater one lives in you. The anointing, the authority that God invested in his son Jesus has been transferred to you, the believer. So we are preaching to you that as you allow the spirit of God to rule in your life, you break free from the authority of the earth and being an earth man Mm -hmm. to become a heavenly man. Well, that was so good. Thank you. That that was good. That is good. From an earth man to a heavenly man. And you have an authority Mm -hmm. that comes not from the earth, but from heaven. And because that authority comes from heaven, it's not bound by earthly rules and regulations. That's so good. Yeah, it's 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 so powerful because the life of the Spirit is on a whole different dimension yes. than the natural life. Yeah. And that's what we're talking about. We're talking about mm-hmm. natural disasters. We said they come from Satan. Satan is the Lord of the earth. You mm-hmm. say, why did God allow that? Because God handed it off to Adam and Eve and, and gave it to them. And God, when he speaks, doesn't take it back. He mm-hmm. told Adam and Eve, you rule the earth. Then Adam and Eve turned around and God did not violate their will. He didn't stop them. And that's where no. a lot of people accuse God. Well, God, why didn't you stop them? Well, why didn't God stop you from sinning? Yeah. Oh, that was a great question, Pastor Mitch. Thank you. God didn't stop you from <laughs> sinning because it's got you have free will. Yes. However, when God has an overarching purpose, there are times that he intervenes, intervenes or overrides. But for the most of the time, I would say 99% of the time, well, you make choices and you're responsible for the choices you make. That's so good. Yeah. I, there's so much in that, but I'm just going to refer to, since we were already talking about John, John 10.10. 10. This is just a real good key if you want to figure out, is this from God or is it from Satan? Um, John 10.10 10 says, the thief, this is Satan, comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But I, so that's Jesus, Jesus came that we would have life and have it to the full. So if something comes in to try to steal things from your life, maybe steal your joy, steal your happiness, kill, that pretty much is self-explanatory, or destroy, that is from the devil. But Jesus came that we would have life and have it to the full. But then you might go on to say, well, my life isn't full. I just had this happen. I had some people, one of the, our discussion points was, what about people who have lost children, had mm. children die or babies die? My life isn't to the full. What do I do with that? Well, that's where we have to understand we live in a fallen world. Yep. And because we live in a fallen world, the generations before us have been full of sin. And that's not to accuse our forefathers. That's just a fact of life. Right. But through Jesus, he can break the curse. But we still have a fallen world, a fallen nature. I still have genetics, uh, physical parts, uh, mm-hmm. all types of malfunctions that go on. And it's just it's just the way it goes on this life that you're not you're not created perfectly like you Mm -hmm. were born as david says i was born into sin i was born if you would miss it a few parts that's not an excuse (laughs) it's just a reality i was born with a proclivity to go against god i was born with a nature that wanted to be Mm -hmm. rebellious i was born with a nature that wanted to be selfish but through jesus he breaks that stuff and gives me new desires. He gives yeah. me a new nature. He gives me a new want to mm-hmm. where I don't want to do that old stuff. I want to do the good stuff. And that mm-hmm. to me is how you know you've passed from death to life because your nature has changed. Your want to's have changed. Yeah. And so that's just crucial to understand because a lot of us want to think, well, I'm, I'm a good person. I'm just good. Well, the Bible's very clear. In Romans, it tells us that we all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. So that means no one is good. No one's good. No, not one. But that leads to another, another side question in this thing about bad things. Why do people do bad things to one another? Forget the word good. Just why do people do bad yeah. things to one another? Mm-hmm. Because our nature without Jesus 
is mm-hmm. totally selfish. Mm-hmm. And I will fight for my right to live, exist, dominate you if you come across me. I mean, and so that's what's kind of humorous to me for, for Pastor Dean to say, well, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a basically a good person. Mm-hmm. You are until someone crosses you or someone yes. does something <laughs> to your kid. Or yes. I just saw this, this video the other day of this lady was just banging on this door just yelling at this dad whose kid had bullied her son on the internet Mm -hmm. and come to find out she had the wrong house. Oh no. (laughs) And she thought his kid's name was Davin and his name was something else. And she looked at her son, her son kept saying, mom, I'm trying to tell you it's two doors down. It's not this house. So, (laughs) you know, bad things happen to people because other people have bad intentions. Yeah. And I think you need to be aware of that. And that's what part of the warfare is that not Mm -hmm. every person walking around you Mm -hmm. is filled full of the spirit of God, filled full of love, wanting to give you the best, wanting to be a servant to you, wanting to have Jesus be glorified in their life. You find those people are few and far between. Yeah. And even even in church. Oh, wow. That's another level. But to realize, as we have said before, and we're going to continue to repeat, God gave us all free will. We all have freedom to choose. But I like what your dad always said. We all have freedom of choice, but we don't have freedom of consequences. And that's That's true. And so some of the things that we go through are because of choices we made. (laughs) And we have consequences to Mm -hmm. those choices. Mm -hmm. Um, But God in his mercy sometimes removes some of those consequences because he is merciful. But he has given us freedom of choice. And I think one of the other uh, scriptures that we want to go to, this is all to give you scriptures as you are talking with others to, to know, okay, where can I find scriptures to help answer these questions in the Bible? So if we look at Ephesians 2, and originally we were talking about verse 2, but there's so many verses within this uh, looking at the context with the text. Um that I think we want to start in verse 1 and just read. So this is Ephesians 2, starting in verse 1. And I'm not quite sure how far I want to go in this, but I'm going to read a couple verses. As for you, you can say we, we were dead in our transgressions and sins in which we used to live when we followed the ways of this world and the ruler of the kingdom of the air. So that, again, is Satan. Um, the spirit who is now at work in those who are disobedient. All of us also lived among them at one time, gratifying the cravings of our sinful nature and following its desires and thoughts. Like the rest, we were by nature objects of wrath. But because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ, even when we were dead in our transgressions, because it is by grace we have been saved. So all of us started off following this kingdom of the air or the prince of the power of the air, you know, Satan. We had evil desires. We had, you know, just the ways of the world that we followed. But through Christ, that's what changes us. Amen. Preach it. That was good. So I think to come back to this verse, it's just very, very clear it says the spirit that now works in the sons of disobedience. Mm-hmm. So that's why it's so easy to disobey because the atmosphere, the the culture, the uh, environment that you live in is uh, geared towards, if you would, going against God. Yeah. And that's why the, it says the sons of disobedience. So you walk into certain situations and you just all of a sudden you have this kind of foreboding sense. Well, it's usually a telltale sign that bad things have happened or about to happen in that environment. Mm -hmm. Like, for instance, the whole thing you guys brought up earlier, you had thought about Sodom and Gomorrah. Mm -hmm. If you were a Sodomite, and that sounds a little perverse, but if you were a Sodomite (laughs) and you were living in that town and you were not on God's side or not on living for God, you were loving life. Mm -hmm. It was a warm, you know, equator-like temperature, Mediterranean sea. I mean, you're, you're... got all this stuff going on all the desires of your flesh are being fulfilled think about this you got a great place to live 
you got a great environment in terms of the the natural beauty of the place. Mm -hmm. You have all this fruit, all this food that's there. You're right by the sea. You got the fish. Those are your fish eaters. You got the mm -hmm. fish. You got the vegetables. You got the fruit. You've got all this stuff going on, and it tells us throughout the scriptures that one of the judgments about Sodom was that they had no care for the poor. Mm -hmm. It talks about, people always think about just their sexual perversion, but there was just this disdain for helping the needy. Mm -hmm. And that's what Jesus does. He always gives you a heart to want to help people. But so you come back to the people living in Sodom at the time, they were loving life. Mm -hmm. And if you walked into that environment, that's why Lot moved there, because it was such a great-looking spot. It appealed to the eye senses. It appealed to the lust of the flesh. It was something about Sodom that just drew people from all around. They just couldn't wait to get there. And it's like today. I just saw a, uh, a headline, not today, but on the uh, TV where it talked about you can do sex vacations Ugh. where you can go <sighs> to places hmm. around the world and it's geared towards you fulfilling your carnality. And what I'm saying is that the people in those environments, they think life is great. They just think life is a is a is a ball of peaches. They're just, you know, they're just enjoying enjoying the way it's going. There's people making money, it's bringing tourist income, you know. These people are getting their lust fulfilled. But we know because of the word of God that sin will eventually destroy that person, that city, that nation. Yeah. And that's what that's why I believe that what we're doing right here with this is we're here just to sound the alarm. When you sign up to follow Jesus and you want to serve him, mm -hmm. there's a prince of the power of the air working in who? The sons of disobedience. Mm -hmm. So that's why I don't think it's strange when people don't want to go smoke your dope and people don't want to go do drugs or people want you to go do all this stuff with them. It's because you've decided to follow Jesus and it says they think it's strange. They think you're weird. They think you're eccentric <laughs> that you don't want to go do all the same stuff they're doing. Yeah. No, it's good. And that's what God's after. God's after a people that will follow and pursue him no matter what adversity comes your way. And I'm here to encourage you that, yeah, you have warfare, you have things, but don't blame God for things that go on. And he's not the source. And we go there back go. to the thing in Luke 13 about the Tower of Siloam that fell and about people who it says went into the very temple to sacrifice to God and got killed in the temple by the Roman governor. You think, well, they were doing something for God. They were living for God and they got whacked. Well, I'm here to tell you, because you live in a fallen world and the evil people are there, you have to be prepared that when you're in warfare, sometimes your fellow soldiers get wounded and killed. Yeah, they do. And sometimes they fall short. And sometimes mm -hmm. your fellow soldiers become... Uh, they just become very um, disillusioned with what's going on. And sometimes people quit on the faith. I could go on and on. But so natural disasters, what are we saying about natural disasters? We are saying that natural disasters are caused by the prince of the power of the air. When that Adam and Eve sinned in garden, we're saying that sometimes you make choices on your own mm -hmm. that creates uh, adversity in your life. Yes. We're also talking about sometimes other people come in and do things to you because the sons of disobedience, and they do things that mm -hmm. create adversity in your life. Mm -hmm. But we're here to declare again, God is absolutely good and God yes. never causes this stuff. Yes. And I think, you know, to kind of summarize, because it all keeps going back to, but why do bad things happen to people that seem to be following God? Mm -hmm. You know, why does that person get cancer and die as opposed to... And I, and I'm not trying to label, but just these are the conversations. This person's over here committing murder, you know, did all this stuff. And yet, you know, they're living a long life. But these people that are, quote, good people, but we see them in church. Maybe, you know, they're they're like Mother Teresa. They're helping in orphanages. They're doing these good things and they get cancer and they die. Mm -hmm. You know, why? Mm -hmm. And why? <laughs> I was hoping that was rhetorical. <laughs> That's a good question. And we're, we're here to, again to say that we live in a fallen world, mm -hmm. and I can't ascribe to you every reason why. There could be uh, physical reasons. There could be spiritual reasons. It could be mm -hmm. emotional reasons. I mean, when mm -hmm. they tell you that 80% or so almost 90% of every disease is rooted in some type of emotional... It's stress-related. 80% uh, of diseases, could be more now, are stress-related. And so we do... 
deal with stress. How do we handle that? And because we're fallen people, yeah. we, we, even though I love Jesus, I still have a nature that I have to mm-hmm. crucify every day called my flesh. Yeah. And a lot of times you have people that they love the Lord. They've got a heart of gold, mm-hmm. but in their mind or in their emotions, mm-hmm. there's just this incredible avenue that Satan has to try to, to try to mm-hmm. bring them down. And he uses sickness and disease to do yeah. that. But we just, again, reiterate sickness and disease is not sent by God. Because people will often attribute that to God, too. But why would God send sickness and disease, but then send Jesus and say, by his stripes, we are healed? (laughs) So God does not send disease because he would not have wanted his son to go through the things he went through to bring our healing. He said that to Moses through Exodus in Exodus 15, 23. I am the Lord, your healer. I allow none of the diseases that come upon you that come upon the Egyptians for I am the Lord, your healer. Yes. Uh, There's so many scriptures that deal with healing and that. No, that's not really the focus. But as you were talking, one of the things that, that crossed my mind again about it's just so sad when someone says the Lord took him. Yeah. Or Mm. God gave them that disease to teach them a lesson. No, no. Or. And I'm thinking, what normal parent or what healthy parent would ever want to have their child suffer with some sickness or disease? Nobody. No, no. But right now, it goes back to we live on a fallen earth. This earth has not been made new. Someday, there will be a new heavens and a new earth. Amen. But we are living in a fallen world. The Satan is still the prince of the power of the air. He still is ruler over planet Earth. So he sends bad things. He causes bad things. One thing people will say, and I think then we'll try to wrap it up after this, is, well, while this, you know, we're in COVID right now, it's still going on. So the pandemic. Well, if God's in control, then why are we in this pandemic? Yeah. What would you say? <laughs> you get to answer that one. Is God in control? Well, God is absolutely in total control. However, he doesn't go back on his word. Mm -hmm. And he told Adam and Eve what? To have dominion over the earth. Yes. To rule it and subdue it. Because of their violation of that commitment that God Mm -hmm. made to them, God did not change his his command. Because mm-hmm. he told Adam and Eve, you're to rule the earth. Mm-hmm. Adam and Eve in turn and told Satan, no, we're going to let you rule the earth. Mm-hmm. We and handed they, it and over. And then for God to step in, if you would, and destroy Satan, would violate the command that he gave Adam and Eve. And so for God to stay true to his character, if you would, has to let it go out because that's his purpose. However, in the midst of this, his plan before the worlds were formed Mm-hmm. was to send his son Jesus because yeah. he knew what Adam and Eve would do. Yeah, he knew that sin would enter in. And so there are things that God allows to happen because of how he set things up. Like he allows us to make free choice. And in that we will sin. And, you know, he allows us to choose and make choices and things happen. So even though he could intervene at any time, He has set things in motion until an appointed time that no one knows that Jesus will come back and he will take dominion over this earth. You know, that's when you get into freedom of choice, you're asking some great questions, but it's like an underlying side question would be, why didn't God stop me from making this choice? (laughs) Well, and we said, because he's given us freedom of choice. And so that is what he is allowed to play out until absolutely God's not going to God's not going to overwhelm you and make decisions for you yeah. you have to make decisions and yeah. I think that's the point that a lot of people tend to neglect mm-hmm. is that what they want is God why didn't you like why did my child who took drugs and OD'd mm-hmm. why did that happen well your your son or daughter was taking drugs mm-hmm. therefore they've opened themselves up to the most terroristic being in the universe, Satan. Yeah. And 
at the same time, not every person that takes drugs dies. Some people live a whole lifetime in bondage to drugs, mm-hmm. but other people, mm-hmm. it just seems one little hit or one little pill or whatever, and all of a sudden it just takes their life, and it's yeah. just so sad. So to give an example, a practical example of a testimony um, of somebody that I shared with, it was many years ago now, but she had experienced, her parents went through a divorce when she was very, very young, probably age around five, maybe even four or three. It was a very, very young age. And so she harbored a lot of anger to God. And she actually started going into drugs and alcohol at a young age. And um, so whenever we sat down to have a conversation, she was still carrying that and said, I don't understand why God allowed them to get divorced. I don't understand that. Why didn't God stop it? And so as we were praying and talking through this, my response to her, one was, God gives us freedom of choice. Did he want her parents to divorce? Absolutely not. That's not God's heart. God's heart is for marriage, for them to be there together to raise their family. But he gave man and woman a freedom of choice. And in this case, her father chose to walk away from the marriage. And so God did not intervene in that freedom of choice. Um, But as we then prayed, because when she was able to release God and say, okay, God, I help me to release my anger towards you. And just to realize I need you to bring healing to me. Then God showed her a vision And it was when she was sitting there, she said, I remember, I remember seeing the suitcases in the hallway and my shoes were there. And, and I remember seeing them needing to put them on my feet and God showed her Jesus right there with her helping beside her, just like comforting her and helping to put her shoes on. And so when she felt totally alone, God showed her he was there with her in the midst of the hurt and pain. And with that, she got such freedom in her life. She was able to receive the healing that God had for her. I mean, I remember that moment just as clearly now as when we prayed probably 15 years ago now. And not only that, was she able to receive that healing and got to heal her heart, But then she was able to receive that um, deliverance from the bondage of alcohol and drugs that she had lived under because she was turning to those things because she didn't realize she could turn to God. And so when she was able to release that blame and that anger and say, God, I need your healing, God showed her he was there in her life with her, then she was able to get healed, but also free from those things. And she was able then to get married and have a wonderful marriage, all because she was able to realize God is a good father. God never leaves us or forsake us. So even though our parents or other people in our lives may have made bad decisions that hurt us, God's intention is never for those things to happen. And in fact, if you read in Romans 8, and I'm going to wrap up my section and let Pastor Mitch share something, but Romans 8, 28, and in fact, we just went through these again last Sunday, says, and we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him and have been called according to his purpose. So did God cause those bad things? Did God want her parents to get divorced? Absolutely not. But if we realize God doesn't cause the bad things, then we know it is safe to turn to him for the healing that only he can provide. When you lose a child, and there's lots of people I can think of that have lost children, very early age, some, their children have been stillborn. That was not God's intention or purpose. That was not his desire. God did not cause it. It happened in our fallen world, death, destruction, to destroy, kill, kill, steal, and destroy, that is from Satan. God desires that we would have life and to have that to the full. So that baby, that child is with God now. 
How do we deal with the hurt that we have? We know we can turn to our good father who has good purposes and intention. And that's how we can have joy in the midst of loss in our life. And we can know God has good things for us and he can bring the healing and he can set us free because that is his desire and purpose. Wow. Preach it. That was good. So that is, that yeah. Really and so I don't know if you have, you that? <laughs> no, but that is just a very clear testimony that I can share from going through that with someone. Well, that was just a powerful moment. And that, and that's so I'm just encourage the people watching and that's so encouraging to see the Lord be able to do that for that person. They spent their whole life living under this, these, this bad emotional yeah. judgment against God, all this stuff. And Jesus mm-hmm. sets them free, gets rid of the alcohol, gets rid of the drug addiction. What an incredible joy to express to people that there's hope, yes. that there is hope no matter what situation you're in, there is hope for you. Yes. And that's what we've found out. And that's what we pray for people. And we've seen miracle healings. We've seen a restoration in relationships. We've seen people who've had bondages and hurts and heartaches and headaches and all types mm-hmm. of bad habits. And just seeing Jesus just set the captives free yeah. because that's what he is. And it reminds me of this verse. I'll just close out my part with this verse. It's in, again, in Romans eight, you're reading earlier, mm-hmm. but in verse 32, it says, he who did not spare his own son, Romans eight thirty two. Mm-hmm. He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all. Now, let me just go through that. What does us all mean? It means all of us. <laughs> Nobody gets left out. All of us. Every all. person, every tribe, tongue, language, nation. Mm-hmm. Every, so he delivered him up for who? Us all. That it says, how shall he not with him also, key word here, freely yeah. give us all things freely. You can't earn these blessings from God. You can't earn deliverance, salvation, Mm -hmm. uh, the things of the Holy Spirit. They're free. The Bible says that he will freely give you all things. And Mm -hmm. that's our good father. There you go. So to close this out, why do bad things happen? Because there is an enemy of our souls, and that is Satan. But we don't focus on him. We focus on God, who is our good father father and he is for us and if god is for us who can be Be against against us us. amen so we hope this encourages you helps answer some of those questions you may have about why bad things happen know that those things are not from god that he loves you and he wants to bring healing to your life because he loves you and he has a good plan and purpose for your life So until next time, we'll see you soon, and God bless. Thank you for joining us. Please make sure to like, share, and subscribe. And if you liked what you heard today, please consider donating. You can support C3 by clicking the giving button on our homepage at cccsc.org or by texting cccsc to 833-257-5698. Thanks again and have an awesome day. And remember, God has a great plan for your life.